And Tennessee won the toss, elected to defer, so they will kick off. Rob Baronis will send it skyward and back deep to receive for the Steelers is their new return man, Stefan Logan, who's been a training camp sensation, played in the Canadian League of British Columbia last year, and he will run it back as the 2009 season is underway in Pittsburgh. Logan from the three, cutting across the field. Crowd on its feet to the 40, and a stirring run back to the 42-yard line where he's forced out by Michael Griffin, a 40-yard run back to get it started as we take a look at the Steeler offense. Ben Roethlisberger, Miami University. Willie Parker, Clinton High School. Santonio Holmes, the Ohio State University. Hans Ward, Georgia. Heath Miller, Virginia. Matt Spath, University of Minnesota. Max Starks, Florida. Chris Kimoyati, University of Utah. Justin Hartwig, West Des Moines Valley. Trey Essex, Northwest. Willie Cologne, Austin University. Steelers lining up in a double tight end set. They use two and three tight ends. A lot. Ward on a short pass to the outside. And Hines Ward, who is the MVP in the Super Bowl following the 05 season, making the catch there. That's a gain of five. At the Titans last year in late December in a very big game, which secured home field advantage for the Titans, there were the numbers for Roethlisberger. 329 through the air, but he was sacked five times and lost two fumbles. Parker and Frank Summers, the rookie 44, lines up at fullback on second and five. And they give it to Parker, who tries to get outside and cannot because that's Stephen Tullock, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. A loss of three, third down and eight. Well, I think Mike Tomlin said it best. The most violent team will win this game. You can see the Titans already eight guys up. They just are going to try and force this running game away from the Pittsburgh Steelers. They want to put the ball in the hands of Ben Roethlisberger and take their chances with this great secondary that they have. Third and eight, and they bring in four receivers, including Lima Swede, their second-year speedster, and the fastest guy on the team, the rookie Mike Wallace from Mississippi. And Roethlisberger with that classic pump fake deep downfield and the pass is underthrown. Intended for Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace running about a 4-3 at the combine. Drafted in the third round. They love him. But he's going to be a project and the guy who will see action from time to time. And he sees action right here. You know, Al, I'm not so sure they weren't trying to hit Hines Ward on an out and up here. He pumped and then thought Hines was going to go up. And he ran into one of the Titans, Nick Harper. And it just so happened that Mike Wallace almost got there. Daniel Sepulveda, who was hurt last year, is back after knee surgery, and that kick will be down inside the five-yard line. So Sepulveda is able to pin the Titans deep. 54-yard punt, and let's take a look at the Titans' offense as they come out onto the field. Jerry Collins, Penn State. Chris Johnson, East Carolina. Mon Hall, the one and only University of Texas. Justin Gage, University of Mizzou. Kenny Britt, Rutgers. Bo Scape, the real UT. Michael Roos, Eastern Washington. Eugene Amano, Southeast Missouri State Union. Kevin Mawai, Louisiana State University. Jake Scott, Idaho. Dave Stewart, Mississippi State. Excellent offensive line. Roos went to the Pro Bowl last year, 6'7", 315 on the left side, and there's no room at all. Probing the middle, Chris Johnson. And when you probe that middle, the first guy you run into is 98 Casey Hampton at 6'1", 325, who eats a lot of space up. How'd you like to face the number one ranked defense in every category? It'd take me a half an hour to go through all the things they were number one in last season. Your first offensive series of the year backed up with the terrible towels flying all around you. Second and ten from the two. Off play action. The pass is caught at the six yard line for a short game. Paul, the fullback, Troy Palomalo, who of course will be all over the field tonight and every night and every Sunday afternoon, making the tackle. It'll be third and six. James Harrison almost gets there under the pressure, goes inside the tight end, and just barely gets nipped. Kerry Collins has enough presence to get back outside and barely get this thing inside Troy Palomalo. 
If nothing else, the Titans have a little breathing space if they have to punt. Nate Washington sets up in the slot. Collins in the shotgun on third and six. And it's an inside handoff. And making the tackle is Polamalu. So he picks up right where he leaves off last year. Chris Johnson, the ball carrier. Polamalu comes flying into the backfield and knocks him down at his own four-yard line. Check out the speed of Troy Polamalu here. He was about 10 yards off the ball and absolutely ripped up and caught him in the backfield. Troy Polamalu runs about a 4-3-5. Besides being one of the biggest hitters, he's also one of the fastest defenders in this league. He looked like he was in fast forward and wow. everybody else's regular speed. Craig Hentrick in his 16th year out of Notre Dame. This is Logan from the 46. And Logan, after that 40-yard run back on the opening kickoff, runs this one back 10 into Tennessee territory. Early first quarter, no score. The confluence of the three rivers here in Pittsburgh. And the commissioner is here tonight on opening night, Roger Goodell. Looking on, beginning his fourth year as the NFL commissioner and watching the Steelers begin this drive at the Tennessee 43-yard line. Roethlisberger, a quick flip to the outside to Mike Wallace to the 40-yard line. Gain of three. Let's take a look at the Titans' defense. Devon Curse, Gator Nation. Jason Jones, the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Tony Brown, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Kyle Vandenbosch, Nebraska. David Thornton, North Carolina. Stephen Tulloch, North Carolina State. Keith Bullard, Cuse. Nick Harper, Fort Valley State. Michael Griffin, Texas. Chris Hope, Florida State of the 90s. Colin Finnegan, Sanford. We'll start putting up subtitles next week. Second and seven to the outside. Holmes on a screen. And Holmes makes his first catch of the season. The Super Bowl MVP. The unforgettable catch in the back corner of the end zone. And that's a first down as he reaches the Tennessee 30-yard line. Well, Heath Miller now has been the lead blocker several times so far on these quick screens. As long as the Titans want to play Cortland Finnegan 10 yards off the ball against Santonio Holmes, they're just going to raise up and do this. This is already the second one they've tried. And Heath Miller, you can't convince anybody in Pittsburgh that he's not the best tight end in the NFL. Beautifully designed play. Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator. Back to the ground they go. Willie Parker goes nowhere. The Tennessee defense, especially up front, they're minus the guy, Albert Hainsworth, who signed with Washington for what they said is $100 million. It's about 40 guaranteed, and we'll see about the rest as he goes along. But the Titans tend to downplay that a little bit, not to diminish him. And there's Chuck Cecil, the new defensive coordinator. But they rotate a lot of guys along that defensive front. Second down and 11. They play a base 4-3. Screen set up inside. And that's the tight end. That's Heath Miller. And he's close to a first down. He's tackled by the ex stealer Chris Hope. It'll be third down and two at the Tennessee 22. On that play, David Thornton, the linebacker, had man coverage. And yet he's going to get picked off the tight end with the pass protection coming out there towards him. You can see him. He's charging up and trying to make the play, and Willie Colon just picks him off the man coverage. That's why they created such a big play. Now you've got Holmes and Ward stacked on the left side. Willie Parker is the sole back. Miller on a wing to the right. Roethlisberger to the air. Moving to his left. Avoids a sack. Classic Ben. Tries to come back the other way, and this time they finally get him. And that's Jason Jones, who last year when Hainsworth was hurt in the Pittsburgh game and on the bench, Jones had three and a half sacks, so he picks up where he left off last December in Nashville. He's going to end up working against Trey Essex, the new guard for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Coming inside, almost gets him the first time. Hustles, gets back on his feet, and comes back and falls right back into Ben. You know Ben's not going to stop running around. Big play for the Titans. That is a 19-yard sack to take it from third and two to fourth and 21. Sepulveda's kick hangs. Fair catch called for by Cortland Finnegan, who will run back punch tonight for Tennessee. And the Titans will take over at that spot. 8.20 to go in the quarter. 
Sunday Night Football Extra on NBCSports.com and NFL.com. From the 11-yard line on first down, Collins is going to hand the ball to Johnson. Johnson will cut back the other way, and the speedy Johnson with a first down and a lot more. And Troy Palomano finally chases him down along the sideline, and we have our first penalty flag of the game. Bill Levy is the referee for the moment. It's a 32-yard gain. After the runner was out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 43 defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And that is Polamano, so it's 32 plus the foul. Well, this is what makes Chris Johnson just so dangerous. No way in the world you think he can get all the way back to the outside. Back in the back, Ryan Clark thought he had it contained. He simply didn't. And don't forget, Troy Polamalo is still angry that Chris Johnson in their game last year stuffed the ball in his face as he was crossing the goal line. That may be a little retribution there. From the 42 now, Collins slings it over the middle and wide open is the tight end, Bo Scaife, who takes it to the 22-yard line. Polamalo in on that tackle as well. So that's a gain of 20 yards and a first down. The one thing that when you talk to the Titans about playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, they felt like their tight ends could have a big day. They caught seven passes the last time these two teams got together, and that was a game in which the Titans handled the Steelers pretty easily. From the 22, they give it to Johnson. He gets a nice block. And then a short gain to the short side of the field, taken down by Ryan Clark. So three big plays in a row, the 19-yard sack, of Roethlisberger, then the run by Johnson and the personal foul and the pass to Scaife. Well, the one thing if you're a Titans fan that's exciting here is that they're making some plays on the edge. Uh, that time, Bo Scaife and Algie Crumpler, excellent blocks to be able to set the edge. Two times now they've gotten outside this defense, and that's hard to do. And they have a rookie tight end who's hurt, won't play tonight, but you hear a lot about Jared Cook before this season is done. Second and seven. Great protection for Collins. And then the pass is dropped, and that's Algie Crumpler, the veteran tight end. Crumpler in his ninth year out of North Carolina, former Falcon. It'll be third down and seven. Yeah, and Algie's really become much more of a blocker, kind of a dominant blocker in many ways, which was surprising because he really was just a receiver when the earlier part of his career. But now's when it gets interesting when you play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now is when you see all of Dick LeBeau's zone blitzes. Here it comes. Third and seven out of the shotgun. Five-man rush. Collins to the outside, and Polamalu is all over Scaife that time. It's incomplete, and it will be fourth down and seven. Troy Polamalu is simply flying around the field. You see him? right there in the middle but watch him close on this i mean that was a good seven eight yards of separation as they try to just get it out to the tight end and let him break a tackle but polamalo has just been everywhere tonight 37 yard attempt for one of the best kickers in the league rob baronis great Hendrick to hold and the kick is no good Baronis misses from 37 with 6.44 to go in the opening quarter. Still nothing, nothing. Well, Rob Baronis had missed only four of 72 field goal attempts from inside 40. He misses there. This is a tough place to kick field goals, but not particularly so tonight. I mean, it's a little windy, but for the most part, the weather is not a factor. Rashard Mendenhall is the running back, and right off the bat, his first carry of the year is a mistimed handoff. Mendenhall was their number one pick out of Illinois last year, got hurt early in the season, put on injured reserve, and they expect to use him a lot more this year if he can stay healthy. Not exactly a confidence builder for your first carry of the season. They definitely would like to work him in so Willie Parker doesn't get overused, but if you're going to take out your quarterback... Well, we're not going to play so much. Second and nine. Miller sets up as the fullback. We'll try it again. And this time, Lyndon Hall will be wrestled down up at the 30-yard line by the 
Outside linebacker Keith Bullock. Boy, Keith Bullock that time, it looked like he was going to be trapped by Heath Miller, and he just fought right through that block, took Keith Miller apart, and then caught the back. Big time play that time by Bullock. Watch him coming right here. It's like he's going to get trapped, slips inside, and grabs Mendenhall. Now, Moeldi Moore, who did a great job last year, he was Parker that got hurt, and Mendenhall got hurt. He's their third down back. Moeldi Moore flanking Roethlisberger in the backfield. Here they come on an all out blitz, and down goes Ben again. And that's Tony Brown, one of the guys taking the place of the departed. Albert Hainsworth, Tony Brown, fifth year out of Memphis with the second Tennessee sack of Roethlisberger tonight. Albert Hainsworth, who this defensive line is playing great right in the middle here. Just comes right between. They try to slide that line left, and Max Starks had too many people to try and block, so it has been the blitz of the Titans that's been paying off so far. Nine-yard sack. Now Sepulveda's kick. Will bounce at about the 45 yard line, and that'll look real good on the stat sheet with about a 20 yard roll as well to the 26 yard line. 54 yard boot. Still no score. And prime time from Beering Monday night, right here on NBC. Lendale White comes into the game. He and Johnson. Together gained 2,000 yards on the ground last year. The fake to him, he stays in the block. The pressure is on Collins, who gets it away. Hits Scaife, and Scaife is able to pick up maybe a first down close to it as Farrier makes the stop. Well, let's go back to a prior series. Watch Troy Polamalu. We talked about how fast he's been playing. 14 yards off of where he makes this hit. Closes and catches one of the fastest backs in the league in the backfield. Pretty impressive stuff. Nine offensive plays for Tennessee. Paul Amano has been in on four tackles. First and ten from the 36. Flag is thrown and wide open is Justin Gage, who was their leading wideout last year, but Bill Levy's crew throwing the flag. Second penalty of the night. William Gay got completely turned around. The new starting quarterback. Yeah, legal formation. Number 76 offense was not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Still first half. Right tackle David Stewart. Well, they don't like to give these offensive tackles an advantage. Was he too far back off the line of scrimmage there? One of those you'll remember it next time kind of deals. The right tackle. That is a big penalty. That's expensive. But I've got to think the Titans are thrilled with where they are in this game right now. It looked like they were going to be backed up. It looked like the Steelers' defense was going to dominate, and yet they've done some pretty good things, just missed the field goal. First and 15, the ball is at the 31-yard line. And Collins throws, and that is caught as they go to Scaife again. So Scaife and Crumpler are the tight ends, and we talked about Cook. That's Kieran Fox making the tackle, taking the place of the injured Lawrence Timmons, game of four, second and six. You know, Kerry Collins has had a lot of success against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 3-0 and lifetime, and last season he was tremendous when these two teams played, 102 quarterback rating, no other quarterback all season had over 100 rating, so you can see that Kerry has a plan against these guys. Pretty fascinating career arc for Kerry Collins, who played his college ball. At Penn State, he hands the ball off to Lendale White, and that'll make a third down. Collins went to Carolina when they came into the league in 95 and became their starting quarterback about a month into the season after Frank Reich was the quarterback. Took him to the championship game, the NFC championship game in 96. Had problems there, went to New Orleans for a while, played with the Giants, led them to the Super Bowl in 2000, then to Oakland. And when he got released by Oakland after the 05 season, he thought his career might be over. But Fisher called, he goes to Tennessee, and here he is, reborn. Third and three. And that pass is caught for a first down by Gage. And, of course, of course, one of the reasons he's reborn is that Vince Young had 
his problems last year emotionally and in terms of injury that gave Collins the opportunity to play on opening day he kept the job yeah he is absolutely the man and so far the Pittsburgh Steelers are making this pretty easy on him we're not seeing all the blitzing that we typically see on third down which allows some double teaming going on and I think what's happening is the Titans are leaving so many people in the block Titans Tight ends are just simply making the difference up front. You saw Young on the split screen, and then the pass is caught over the middle. And getting away from an initial tackle is Lendale White. And Lendale White picks up about five. Lendale White a lot thinner. He's, he's lost 40 pounds. So how did he do it? He likes to say he gave up tequila. If you can lose 40 pounds giving up tequila, I'm going to get on tequila so I can get off of it. <laughs> Jeff Fisher told us last night it's really just a, it's a combination of that and not going to in and out anymore. You could carry around a couple of cases of tequila <laughs> and not lose that much. Right. Right. Leads me to Sean Merriman, but then again, forget that. Second down and five. Here's Collins back to pass again. Going deep downfield. And what an interception one-handed by Troy Polamalu. And he takes it back to the 20-yard line. That is amazing. But then again, it's Polamalo. I don't know if a guy can make the Pro Bowl after the first quarter of the first <laughs> game of the season, but it may have already happened. I, I, he's a freak, and I mean that is high praise. That was spectacular. It's first and 10 now for Pittsburgh at the 21-yard line. Tennessee has gained 92 yards in the quarter, and Pittsburgh minus two. And then they'll get back to zero as Willie Parker gains two and is tackled by Tullock. Olamala with seven interceptions last year. He's made five straight Pro Bowls. Kenny Britt, the rookie, coming down the field, and he's going to say... Nobody ever did this in college to me. He even pushed off on the play. Watch this. He's going to push him in the back and still come away with the interception and jump up and get ready to run. He was fired up with good reason for this one. We'll show you in a minute why. They go four wide to the Steelers here on second down and eight, including Sweet and the rookie Wallace along with Holmes and Ward. Inside handoff. And Parker starts to trip as he gets to the line of scrimmage, and Chris Hope comes up to make the tackle. And here's one reason why Polamalu was fired up, Chris. In the game last year, this was really the game-winning play to Chris Johnson. But watch him stick the ball in the face of Troy Polamalu as he's going in the end zone. And they've talked a lot about the fact that the Titans players stepped on the terrible towels and all that. They said that didn't mean anything. But when you stick the ball in the face of this guy, you better be ready for a football game the next time they see you. And, boy, it has been all that and more so far tonight. Third and seven. Maloney Moore, third down, back is in. Roethlisberger down the right sideline. That's going to be picked off at the 43-yard line, and that's Vincent Fuller who picks it off. The nickel back, and Robert Antonio Burton. Holmes was the intended receiver. So Collins gets picked. And then on the very next series, Ben gets picked. He's going to overthrow Santonio San Holmes here going to the corner route. But he just throws this way late. He throws it after the break. Never looks off Fuller at all. Just one of those early season nervous kind of throws. You know, the thing that Ben has developed over the past couple of years has been the pump fakes, the looking off of the defenders and Ben saying what is going on with that but really that was Ben Roethlisberger's mistake from the 44 and the quarter will end here on a one yard run by Chris Johnson so a lot of action but no scoring after one opening night 2009 Titans nothing Steelers nothing and this NFL kickoff special continues after these messages And tonight's aerial coverage from Pittsburgh is being brought to you by Duracell. Start the second quarter. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer opening night. Very interesting 
first quarter. A lot of action. Tennessee with 93 yards. Pittsburgh with one. Each quarterback with a pick. One field goal by Baronis missed. And we start the second quarter on the second and nine from the Pittsburgh 43 yard line. Collins out in the flat. And that's Johnson escaping a tackle. And Johnson picking up a first down. That was Lamar Woodley, the outside linebacker, who was one on one with him and couldn't bring him down. Nobody can bring this guy down one on one. Lamar Woodley, one of the better tacklers in the NFL. Gets Chris Johnson. This is perfectly defense. If you draw it up on a blackboard, we got him, right? No, we don't got him there. Chris Johnson, 4-2-8, something like that. One of the fastest times ever at the NFL Combine. Deadly in the open field. Even quicker, 4.24 was his time and had a fabulous rookie year. From the 33-yard line, Johnson again. And one reason that Tennessee didn't make it to the championship game last year in addition to turning the ball over and there was a screw up with the clock in the Baltimore game at Tennessee was Johnson got hurt in that game. And no question about it. Well, I tell you what, he got introduced to James Harrison on that one, didn't he? Oh, boy, Michael Ruiz thought he had him blocked and James Harrison, the defensive MVP, just threw him out of the way and crunched Chris Johnson. <laughs> Still shaking his head. And... Coming free that time was Woodley. Woodley was unblocked, and it was all Collins could do to get the ball away. It almost looked as if Johnson was still a little woozy from the earlier hit by Harrison, and Woodley comes in uncontested. Yeah, Chris Johnson's going to try and get out on the screen. He needed to make a little contact here with Woodley, though. You could see he missed the block, and so Kerry Collins didn't have a chance to get it off. You've got to make some contact before you slip out in the, in the screen. Third and 12, look out now. 34 yard line. Here they come again, and it's Farrier through the middle that time. Kick the ball with about 6,000 schemes. Farrier comes a little late, comes through the middle, comes in basically unblocked. With a big sack setting up a fourth and 22. And they love this crossing action blitz right here. James Ferrier, when he gets running, is one of the faster linebackers around. He says he loves it when just the back blocks him. Well, that time he had less than that. Hendrick to punt. Stefan Logan sets up inside the 10 yard line. Logan's going to call for a fair catch and make it at the five. So Roethlisberger and company will start at their own five, 13.04 to the half. Nothing, nothing. Ben Roethlisberger played his college ball at Miami of Ohio. He's from the town of Finley, Ohio. What's he done over his first five seasons? 51 wins. No quarterback in the history of the league has won more over the first five. Brady has nine postseason wins. Ben already has eight. And in the first five seasons, Brady with three Super Bowl wins. Troy Aikman had two in his first five years. And Ben, of course, has two, first beating Seattle Seattle's after the 05 season and then leading that tremendous drive at the end of the game to knock off the Cardinals in Tampa on February 1st. So the Steelers from the five-yard line, Ben is four of six for 27 yards. But overall, they've gained two net yards. There have been two mammoth sacks. And Roethlisberger in the end zone with a pump fake and then throws over the middle to get some breathing room. And the pass is caught by Heath Miller, where he's tackled at the 13-yard line by Hope. Gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. <laughs> you almost <laughs> have to laugh, but Ben Roethlisberger will hold the ball anywhere, anytime. He's in the end zone, a little pump fake, no problem. I know my guys have. He just has the incredible guts back there. He, he loves to hold the ball. He's not going to give up on a play. He takes more sacks than any quarterback in the league, and he doesn't care. 139 sacks in the last three years for him. And that Parker has nowhere to go. That defensive line doing a nice job. Javon Kirsch. Already in his 11th year, came in known as the freak as a rookie with Tennessee back in 99. Watch all the gap play here. This is what the Titans are all about. They're going to fill every gap on you and just take away any possibility. That's the best running play the Steelers have to offer. 
When Chris Kamawatu pulls around there, that has been their bread and butter here for a long time. And right now, this Titans defensive line is just kicking the Steelers offensive line. Third down and two. I didn't know where you were going there for a second, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the shotgun, Roethlisberger. That's a first down. He hits Miller. So Miller with two grabs on this drive. And David Thornton is there to make the tackle. 11 and a half to go on the half. First down. If you think Ben's dangerous, you just started working with me. <laughs> an element of danger is always good. Oh, boy. Anything to keep an audience. This is fun. You know, it's amazing for one of those games that you know, no score, but they're getting after each other up front. Yep. Plenty of excitement from the 21 yard line. Four man rush. Roethlisberger steps up, feeling the pressure, and hits Santonio Holmes close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. He thinks he's picked up the first, but the line judge comes in and says, mm, a few inches shy. Cortland Finnegan makes the tackle, second and in inches. Where right now, when you're talking about the Albert Hainsworth effect, this is where it comes into play. Look at all the space here between there and Ben Roethlisberger. When Albert Hainsworth was playing for the Titans, you would never see that. He would always get that kind of pressure and that kind of push and help those ends coming around the corner. Second and inches from just outside the 30-yard line, and Parker has the first down. And Parker out to the 40-yard line. Flag is thrown. Matt Spate threw a nice block on that last play. Parker with a tender hamstring in training camp. Holding. Number 86, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That negates that. Hines Ward with the penalty. Hines Ward there just wrapped his arm around the neck of the defender. He's essentially a tight end. Let's face it, probably the greatest blocking wide receiver ever. Comes down and just grabs the helm at that time of one of the Titans and a nice run gets called back. But at least now we've had a couple of plays in a row where the Steelers offensive line has looked good. I mean, those were good blocked, uh, well blocked plays the last couple. Take it down and five. Watch out for the blitz coming here. They're going in this spread formation. The Titans want to blitz this. Second down and six. The ball put back at the 25 yard line. <laughs> Going to coverage, and Roethlisberger is going to escape to his left and then throw on the run, and that's caught by Hines Ward. There's another flag down in the offensive backfield, and now they're going to say, among other things, Ward didn't make the catch, but the flag is all the way back at the 14-yard line. And that one's thrown by the referee himself, Bill Levy. I think this is going to go against Max Starks, but not so Holden. sure. Number 78, offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Confirm, Max Starks. Now, Max Starks is going to get his forearm to the neck of Ford coming around here, but I don't think that's a hold. I think that's just kind of a forearm to the neck. Mm -hmm. You see a hold there, Al? No. I don't either. And Levy, Levy throws the flag. You can see Levy was about 10 yards from the play, so it had the look of a hold, but on the replay, you can see it wasn't. Now it's second and 16 from the 15-yard line. Ben under pressure. Hit as he throws and guns it into Santonio Holmes, who makes the catch in traffic for a first down on second and 16. 18-yard pickup all the way out to the 33-yard line. Ben hanging in and rifling it as he gets hit by William Hayes on the release. William Hayes with a great move against Willie Colon in and out and just is going to drill Ben as he lets it go. Look at the courage to stand in there and what a catch by Santonio Holmes. Courage on both ends of that. You make that catch and you might get your head taken off. At the 33 yard line with nine minutes to go in the opening half. This. Nothing happening there. Willie Parker, undrafted, came out of North Carolina. Really didn't have a chance to play that much in college, and the Steelers found him. And then, of course, comes to Pittsburgh, gets known as Fast Willie Parker. 
and comes in with Roethlisberger and of course had that spectacular 75 yard run in the Super Bowl against Seattle to help lead them to the victory in Super Bowl 40. Second down and nine. Willie well, again. This time he has room to run. But Finnegan comes in to make the tackle. Well, nobody's going to win or lose the Super Bowl tonight, Chris. But what a great way to get it started. And, of course, a lot of people thought, well, this was the way it was going to wind up last year in the AFC Championship game with the game to be played at Nashville. But the Ravens had other ideas. Yeah, and if you want to see a lot of points and a lot of touchdowns, catch us on Sunday night. We might have a few more for you when we go to Green Bay. But for right now, this is just a fist fight out here. It's an odd thing to say. Chicago, Green Bay, tune in for a lot of points. Yeah. But that's the way it's shaping up. Third down and five from the 38-yard line. Roethlisberger. And that pass is into traffic and incomplete. And the coverage there by Michael Griffin on Mwilde Moore coming out of the backfield. You ever see a guy pump fake? to the degree that Roethlisberger does. It's amazing he can hold on to the ball. Yeah, absolutely never. The more tape I watch on this guy, it, it's just remarkable the ball doesn't come out of his hands. I don't think he has any extraordinarily big hands or anything, but he pump fakes so hard it makes defenders jump. He really used it to his advantage in the Super Bowl, too. So Paul with a kicking. Cortland Finnegan running back punch tonight, and he'll field this one along the sideline at the 16-yard line. And run it back to the 28th. Halfway through the second quarter, Tennessee nothing, Pittsburgh nothing on opening night. Begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time, and that means I've been waiting all day for Sunday night. And there's Faith Hill, Tim McGraw. Her husband performed at Point Park across the river. Part of the concert on opening night is Collins on first down. Gets flushed out and then just dumps it into his own bench. It'll be second and 10. He was chased that time by Harrison. Michael Ruse this time is going to get a big piece of James Harrison and just sort of pull him around the corner. Harrison not too happy talking to the officials as he was running over to the sideline, but he's getting close. Harrison is giving the Pro Bowl of Ruse all he can handle. Second and ten. Lendale White cuts it back in the former USC Trojan up to the 31 yard line. Kiaren Fox making the tackle as we tick down under seven minutes. And the crowd, the crowd is booing Lendale White because he was at the forefront of stomping on the terrible towels in Nashville last December. And he didn't exactly apologize for it either, <laughs> no. did he? Uh, no. He may uh, want to get an escort out of here. He said he would do it again. <laughs> From the 31, third down and six. And over the middle, the catch is made by Nate Washington, the former Steeler who opted for free agency and the bigger contract goes to Tennessee. He was questionable with the injury coming into the game. Game time decision makes the catch in an eight yard game. Yeah, and you really have to think of the Tennessee Titans, sort of like the New York Giants. A season ago, they were a great running team, but they didn't have the receivers to threaten anybody down the field. They think Nate Washington will be that guy this year. They're sort of Plexico Burris, if you will. Working through a hamstring pull. Makes the catch there, and here goes White again. Gain of three. Talked about what happened last year. That was a huge game. It was going to determine home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. And when Tennessee had it wrapped up, they stopped on it. A couple of guys blew their nose in it. Then Chris Johnson had his own towel. All in good fun. Second and seven. Flag. Collins is going to unleash a bomb. And there's contact and a flag, and Polamalo gets tied up with Justin Gage. Wow. So it looked like it might have been incidental contact. May have been more than that. But there are two flags now, one at the inception of the play and the other in the secondary. 
Well, if they're going to call it on Polamalu, all they could call is a cutoff. In other words, if he is cutting off the route, that is on the defense. Otherwise, it has to be there on the Titans. There are fouls on both teams. Illegal formation. Wide receiver was not on the line of scrimmage. Pass interference. Number 43 defense. The penalty's offset. Replay second out. Polamalu is a veteran guy, and he thought he was in trouble there and just cut off Gage. 43 running right at the top. I don't think so. I, I think yeah. that is offensive all the way. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> I just didn't see what I saw on the field. He turned his head. He was running and looking for the ball. That's just a bad call. Turns out to be no harm, no foul because of the offsetting penalties. But Tomlin expressing his feelings about it. Well, except that it would have been third down in about a bunch now. Second and seven. The ball is at the 42-yard line. Collins slings it to the outside, and that catch is made along the sideline. That's a beautiful grab by Kenny Britt, the rookie, the number one draft choice. There had never been a number one pick from Rutgers until Britt. He's also the second youngest player in the league. Won't turn 21 until next week. And uh, the Titans were trying to hustle up to the line, see if he gets his feet in bounds here. Yes, he did. Great catch. Yes, to maintain control. Yes, he did. All the way to the ground. And uh, what did Jeff Fisher tell us about Kenny Brett? He said, he's too young to know what he's getting into. He'll be fine. Don't worry about him. First catch of his career. Good for 15 in the first down. And Collins is forced to throw that one away because it was Aaron Smith, 11th year defensive end, who's had a stellar career, who comes bursting through the line. Yeah, the defensive ends for the Pittsburgh Steelers for my money and the entire defensive line really they don't get enough credit They do all the dirty work. They try and absorb all the offensive linemen and let the linebackers make the play Dick LeBeau when you talk to him about his defense He always brings up his defensive linemen first because they don't get to get a lot of sacks. They play the run first Happy birthday to Dick. He was 72 yesterday second and ten Lendale White to the 40-yard line. There's a movement of foot to get Dick LeBeau into the Hall of Fame. I couldn't agree more. First of all, the thing about the Hall of Fame is they judge you on one level and not another. In other words, they judge you as a player only and not as a player plus a coach. But on either level, he could be in the Hall of Fame. He had over 60 career interceptions. Well, in that case, put him in twice. <laughs> I'm with you. Third and seven. Collins hit as he throws and gets the pass away, and it's caught by Scape, and he's able to get through Palomaro for a first down. So what? Kerry Collins under pressure, couldn't get very much on it, but Scaife was out alone, and he's able to pick up the first down. What a play by a little running back, Chris Johnson. Any personal foul. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's another one on Paul Amano. The third penalty on Troy tonight. Chris Johnson right here is going to come up and just take on James Ferrier and get just enough of him to allow Kerry Collins to get this thing off. What a gutsy play by a little back. And there's your personal foul. No there's your face mask. Good call. So three calls on Paul Amalo tonight. One was offset by the penalty on Tennessee. First and ten now at the 17-yard line. Quick flip to Gage on the outside. And Gage takes the ball to the 12-yard line with three and a half minutes to go in the scoreless opening half. And now, as we know, this is no fluke. We watched this game unfold like this a season ago. Uh, the Tennessee Titans really believe they the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just have to prevent a free rusher from coming in there and getting to Kerry Collins. Second and five. Gage in motion. Johnson tries to turn it back and gets taken down by Casey Hampton. Well, the Titans come in and Jeff Fisher has been around long enough. Nothing scares Jeff Fisher. He said last night 
We're not going into Pittsburgh to kiss their rings, you know. <laughs> Jeff likes football, doesn't he? He likes football. Both these guys, Mike Tomlin, Jeff Fisher, they like football. This is the area the Titans have probably improved the most from two seasons ago. And the Steelers last year, the best in red zone defense. Third and six. Collins to the end zone. Uh -oh. And incomplete. And Justin Gage gets sandwiched. Looks around for a personal foul. That was James Farrier coming in and popping him, but no flag. Fourth and six. And Baronis comes in to attempt a field goal. Hey, Justin Gage, you know you're going into the lion cage when you come in here. It's like he got his hands on it and then Ferrier almost took his head off. Now defenseless receivers are supposed to be protected to blows to the head, but I think that was below the head, mm. into the shoulder pads, good no call. Baronis earlier going the other way, missed a 37 yarder. This is a 31 yard attempt. This Hensher puts it down and the kick is blocked. And there still hasn't been a point scored in 2009. Rob Baronis, one of the best all time in terms of percentage, has missed one, had one block. Farrier got his hand on it. And Aaron Smith as well. A lot going on here. First of all, they're working on Polamalo's leg, knee, or calf. We can't tell at the moment. It appears to be the knee. The block was by Aaron Smith. He had Farrier behind him, and he was pushed into the line, but it's legal by Kieran Fox. Baronis has now only had his second career field goal block out of 131 tries, and there's been no scoring in 2009. From the 21-yard line, Roethlisberger, two pump fakes, and then the pass is thrown incomplete. Let's go back and take a look at what happened to Troy Polamalu. Trying to pick up the fumble. Oh boy, mm -hmm. and you can see Algy Crumpler, about 280 pounds of him, came down right on that knee. And for Troy Polamalu, the fact that he was trying to make a play, trying to pick it up and run with it, may have cost him. Second and ten as we tick down to the two minute warning. Four man rush. Pass thrown to the outside, and that will be caught by Holmes along the sideline. Stays in bounds. That takes us to the two-minute warning tackle by Harper. Two minutes to the half. No score in Pittsburgh. Toyota halftime show. Bob Costas with an enlightening chat with Jeff Fisher. And Andrea will update us on the Ben Roethlisberger legal situation. Most of you know a civil suit for sexual assault was filed against Ben a couple of months ago, which he has vigorously denied. And he, First and 10, of 33. of course, contends it has not been a distraction, but it sits obviously as a cloud above the Steelers. To whatever extent, you never know. And Andrea will update the legal status of that at halftime. Catch is made here by Mowaldi Moore up to the 36-yard line. It'll be second down and six with 150 to go and looking ahead each team with all of its timeouts. One thing we know about that situation somebody's lying and somebody's going to pay the price mm -hmm. for it. Second and six. Roethlisberger. Over the middle wide open. Heinz Ward gets free. Finds the open space and takes it to the 34 yard line. And timeout is called by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Heinz Ward, a gain of 29. That was Pittsburgh's first play of over 20 yards tonight, a 29-yard reception by Heinz Ward. And on this play, Ben Roethlisberger is going to get two guys with his pump fake. Right here, Keith Bullock, and back here, Chris Hope. And that's really what set that play up. He moved those two guys and allowed Heinz Ward to run wide open down the middle of the field. First and ten out of the gun. Moore and Miller flanking Roethlisberger in the backfield. Again the pump fake. Deep over the middle. Caught for a touchdown by Santonio Holmes. Thirty-four yards. 
So it's a bookend. Home scoring the final points in the Super Bowl and the first points of the 2009 season. Boy, a bad series that time for Chris Hope. He got beaten twice with the pump fakes. Ben Roethlisberger is moving this secondary now. And Reed for the point after. Five plays, 79 yards. And that took all of 52 seconds after the blocked field goal. And Reed bangs it through. So Holmes coming off a spectacular, not only Super Bowl, but great postseason, great end of the regular season. Scores the first touchdown of the 2009 season. Chris Hope again right here is going to be fooled by the pump fake. San Antonio Holmes coming all the way across the field and Hope never sees him. He's coming in over on this side. And the pump fake got Chris Hope for two straight plays and boy did they fly down the field after not doing anything all day. Roethlisberger back in the groove now. This is what he did last season when he played so well. Holmes all the way across the backside. Hope never sees it. Falls for the pump fake. Touchdown Steelers. It's in between a couple of guys who wound up in Honolulu in the Pro Bowl last year. Doesn't look distracted now. Not at the moment. Wow. We had nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and then zip. That was a pretty good nothing, nothing game. Meanwhile, Polamalo is going to go back into the Steeler locker room. Get an update on him. Injured on the block field goal. Reed kicking off. Javon Ringer, rookie from the 10-yard line. Ringer with a, an 18-yard run back in his debut as Palomalo gingerly walks up. Brilliant so far, but now their main guy, or one of their main guys anyway, Troy Palomalo, not out there. Tyrone Carter, 23, takes his spot. And Collins will go deep on the first play, and the pass is incomplete. That's Ike Taylor in on the play to bust it up, intended for the rookie Kenny Britt, second down. Just terrible by Kenny Britt at that time. He doesn't come out of this break, doesn't run too bad a route, comes out, but watch him just crawl out of the break. You got to come back. In the NFL, you are not open. You don't come slamming back to the quarterback. You have no chance in this league. Mike Taylor, seventh year out of Louisiana Lafayette, second down and ten. And Collins with his own pump fake and wide open is Kenny Britt. Britt is inside the 30, inside the 20, still on his feet, finally tackled at the 14. So they go right back to the rookie who's tackled by Ryan Monday. Jeff Fisher sprints out on the field to ask for a timeout. That stops the clock with 54 ticks after a 57-yard reception. Kerry Collins came right back with his own pump fake special there. That time he got Ryan Clark, the safety, as he pump faked. Clark jumped into the middle of the field and left Britt wide open on the outside. That was not on Ike Taylor. That was all on Ryan Clark. Now from the 14-yard line, Collins to the end zone, and that's caught by Justin Gage for a touchdown. So it's nothing, nothing, even though there was a lot of excitement in the first half, and then all of a sudden, an offensive fireworks display breaks out. Seven, six going on seven. Yeah. Just a little out and out route by Justin Gage and Ike Taylor that time. It was his fault. He fell in love with the inside receiver, just never saw the out and up coming at him. And that's about as bizarre a two minutes as I remember. But Troy pulled them all out, and that looked like a different defense. Wait, did that turn off the sound machine in Heinz Field? Baronis with the extra point to tie the game with 48 seconds. That's three plays, 34 seconds. Then we're tied at seven. Forty-eight seconds to the half. We're tied at seven. Let's check in with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. 
Well, we saw the Titans exploiting the absence of two key Steeler defenders. Troy Palomalo in the locker room with a left knee injury. His return is questionable. Linebacker Lamar Woodley also in the locker room with cramps. They're calling his return probable. And of course, Lawrence Timmons, who would have been a starter at inside linebacker, he was hurt and wasn't in not in uniform tonight. Kieran Fox taking his spot. So the Steelers now with some physical issues as we go into halftime. And Al, it really sets up for the second half now for the Titans because without Woodley in there, now you can slide your protection over to Harrison and not worry so much about both those guys on the edge. Stefan Logan back to receive the kick. As Baronis sends it into the night air to the nine yard line. Look out. And Logan, out of the Canadian League last season with British Columbia, takes it to the 27 yard line. So 41 seconds to the half, and the Steelers have two timeouts. Well, Ben Roethlisberger, a notoriously slow starter, as is this offense. But man, when they did the two minute warning, <laughs> everything changed. And now you're starting to see these two veteran quarterbacks manipulating the defense and really settling in. Short, short, short. Watch the screen, Tully. From the 27 yard line, first down. Titans send four. On the outside, that's caught by Miller, and he is able to get out of bounds. Tackled there by Cortland Finnegan with 35 seconds on the clock. I really think the biggest change in this game, for whatever reason, the Steelers' offensive line has settled in. Uh, the Titans are not trying to blitz at this time. They want Ben Roethlisberger to hold the ball, and they think that he does that more when they play with two deep safeties. But right now, all that's doing is allowing him to pump fake and move these guys in the secondary. Going too deep here. Again, rushing four. Seven back in coverage. Ben comes back to the near side. Hits Miller. He gets tackled by Tullock and Finnegan and then calls for a timeout. So with 27 seconds left, that's a first down. And the Steelers have one timeout remaining. 27 seconds and first down at the 46 yard line for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Remember there's never been a field goal longer than 50 yards in this stadium so probably have to get down around the 32 at least. From the 46. Again it's just a four man rush and he hits Ward and Ward Will be thrust out of bounds at the 43. That's another first down. It saves a timeout. He gets out of bounds on his own. And they're in Tennessee territory. Gain of 12 first down. The old dreaded prevent defense there. Jeffrey's pretty good, though. Give him a chance. More often than not, he's going to drill it, although he has had a bit of an ankle injury here lately. 53. Clutch through the years. And again, this is about as tough a place as there is in the NFL to kick field goals. Well, not bad tonight from the 42 yard line. Ben shifting left. And the pass is incomplete. Roethlisberger tried to check down underneath. And now you've got 16 seconds. Jason Jones that time putting the pressure on Roethlisberger. I think he looked at about six receivers there. I was I was trying to count. I don't think you're allowed to send six receivers out. But, man, he just it, it, perpetual motion, and he loves moving left. He's probably one of the rarest of all commodities, a quarterback who likes to scramble left, a right-handed quarterback. You just don't see it that much. Start to recycle your receivers. <laughs> look at a guy and then look at him again. Second down and ten. <laughs> Good protection this time, but now that breaks down the pump fake and he's going to get sacked and William Hayes is the guy who comes in. He's the first guy to get there. Jacob Ford in as well and that'll stop the clock with seven seconds. 
Well, there you go again. It's it's pretty classic Ben. He's going to try and pump fake and move, and Heath Miller doing the best that he can on William Hayes. But when you take five or six seconds to throw it, you're going to end up eventually taking a few sacks, which Ben does. He's trying to stay alive with this thing. And really, when you talk to the Steelers and Bruce Arians, their offensive coordinator, they'll tell you that, you know, about half the sacks are because Ben holds the ball and tries to make plays. But he doesn't want to take that away from him because he makes so many big plays when he does that, too. Pittsburgh took the timeout, so you've got seven seconds. It's a third down play. And time, if they so choose, for either a Hail Mary or throw something underneath and hope that Ward or Holmes or somebody else can get free. And the and Titans have it well protected out around the 30 yard line in the flat. You'll see the two corners drop back underneath that so they can't catch it and get out of bounds. Now they're coming up and press though. Three man rush, eight back. And the pass is caught. There's a flag thrown with one second. Moore makes the catch. But a penalty with one second to play in the half. Illegal formation. Oh, Offense. Boy. Wide receiver was not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Third down. And if you're wondering about the uh, 10 second runoff and all that, it doesn't apply. It didn't stop the clock. All that different kind of stuff. But boy, that was some play by Mawaldi Moore. He was. Looking up at the clock, I think, and, and saw it was down to one second and stepped out and would have given them a chance, but for that penalty. So third down and barring a defensive foul, it'll be the end of the half. They have everybody but Martin Brodeur back on defense here. <laughs> and Roethlisberger. He'll swing it as far as he can. A big jump ball coming up in the end zone. Tip and then intercepted. And this is Portland Finnegan, and he's going to run it back. He's going to run it back past the 30. He's into Pittsburgh territory. And Portland Finnegan still inbounds and finally gets tackled at the 21 yard line. And all I could think about was James Harrison in the Super Bowl. Portland Finnegan running it out of the end zone and running out of time. Good half. Tennessee 7, Pittsburgh 7. So we have a halftime show with Bob Costas next. Very little scoring, but a lot of action in the first half. 7 7, our halftime score. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Andrea Kramer at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Jeff Fisher just moments ago with his team on the Tennessee sideline tough early season start for Tennessee in terms of the schedule four of their first six on the road and they have back to back games one at home one on the road with Indianapolis and New England in October second half underway Tennessee gets the ball reads kick fielded by Javon Ringer the rookie out of Michigan State at the goal line and Ringer up to the 20 yard line. Let's get the physical report, especially with Polamalu, as we check in with Andrea. Yeah, Al, big news for the Steelers. Troy Polamalu out for the rest of the game with that knee injury. Mike Tomlin told me he did not know the severity of it. He'll be replaced by Tyrone Carter in the base defense. Lamar Woodley got an IV at halftime for calf cramps. He will be back. Mike, Tom Mike Tomlin said, don't ride the emotional roller coaster. And of course, it was Polamalu getting hurt. On the block field goal, and there is Carter who will take his spot. Tyrone Carter. Woodley will start here in the second half. The ball is at the 21 yard line as Tennessee begins this drive. And here is Johnson who cuts it back upfield. He takes it out to the 28 yard line. The second year back out of East Carolina has now carried the ball eight times for 38 yards. One of the keys when you're talking about the running game for the Tennessee Titans is Kevin Mawai has to be able to reach. Casey Hampton his quickness has really made a difference when you see them have success running the ball watch him get front side and then get up on the linebacker and that's exactly why they were able to bust off that run that's a key matchup tonight 
Second and three from the 28 yard line. Johnson again. Johnson threading his way through, cutting it back up past the 40. Chris Johnson to the 45 yard line. So two big runs tonight. Nine carries now for 55 yards. That's good for 17. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh on the ground tonight, just 12 yards rushing. Watch him a while on this one. He's going to take Casey Hampton and just go, okay. <laughs> just kind of push him down from the back, but he didn't get the holding call. A lot of times if you get too flagrant with that, they'll call that play back. That was a good play by a veteran center. Hawaii seven Pro Bowls, Hampton four. From the 45. Lindell White's number. So after Johnson carries the first two plays of the half, they go to White, and White takes the ball up to the 49 with a chorus of but boos. I tell you what, Mawai is just getting off here now, and he's getting that edge going on Casey Hampton. And once he gets there, now he goes up on the next level, and you have problems stopping the run. At the 50. On second and five. That's caught by Gage, and that's going to be a first down. As William Gay is there to make the tackle. Kevin Y, so many years with the the Jets, 16th year, LSU, very articulate. President of the National Football League Players Association. So a man very deeply involved in making sure that uh, there is no work stoppage in a couple of years. Well, let's hope he's successful. You see the big brace on his right arm there. Missed a lot of time last year, but says it feels better than it did at any point last year. And this is Lindale White who gets taken down by Chris Hoke as he crosses the line of scrimmage. And the Steelers make a change. They bring Chris Hoke in there, and he did a much better job here on Kevin Mawai. You'll see him right over the center, stands him up, holds his ground there, and makes a play. That was a nice substitution there, but he took his helmet off and should have been penalized. Mm -hmm. And realized it and got it back on in a hurry. Doesn't matter. That should yep. have been a penalty. Absolutely. Second and ten. And the catch is made, and the That's ball is loose. It's a fumble. As Scaife made the catch, Harrison is there for the tackle, and the play continued, and Kieran Fox comes up with the recovery, and Scaife is hurt on the play. So a lot going on. And for the moment, it's a turnover, and we'll take a look at the replay. Was he down? I don't think so. And Harrison, when he hurt his knee, Bo Scaife hurt his knee. He ends up just dropping the football here. Here you can see he's in pain and then lets that thing out of there, and everybody relaxes just a little bit. And I think that's Kieran Fox comes over and picks this thing up. Very strange play. Ball coming loose just as his hand Touch the ground, so they work on him. An injury timeout. Bridges crossing the rivers here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There is Scape. If your hand goes down, it you're not down, as was the case here with Scape. So there's nothing to challenge. It is a fumble, and Pittsburgh will take over at the 46-yard line on the turnover. And coming out of the backfield is Willie Parker. Across the 50, that's a gain of 70. Follow Trey Essex, the right guard. It'll be second down and two, and that puts Parker over 5,000 yards for his career. Going to have everybody pull him back this way on the counter play, start that way and bring it back. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is the first decent run I can remember for them. They have really struggled running the football so far in this one. Well, Parker, less than two yards a carry, nine carries for 17 yards. Mendenhall, two for three. Willie again, a little short of the first down. So it'll be third down and one. So an undrafted free agent, Parker, who had a great Super Bowl in Detroit against Seattle. And they are the guys in the history of the league. Joe Perry with 8,300. Priest Holmes, you forget about Priest not being drafted. Clement Daniels. Back with the Raiders and now Willie Parker up to the moment 5,006 career yards and a lot more to go. And interesting that Willie Parker is still in there now. The Steelers struggled in short yardage last year. 
yeah. making only about 50% of the time. Did they ever? Well, Gary Russell did a lot of the third and short, but he's no longer with the team. Like that. Like that. That's exactly right. Same thing as last year. Third and short, fourth and short. And that's Tony Brown clogging up the middle to make sure he doesn't get the first down. And in comes the punting unit. Tony Brown here is just going to take Hartwig back into the backfield. Slips right around that block and comes around and makes the play. Hartwig tried to reach him and just missed, just fanned on the play. Steelers with the second lowest percentage of converting third and one and fourth and one last year. And that's dropped after a fair catch was called for by Finnegan, but he's able to recover it. So Finnegan returning punch for the first time as a pro. He did it in college, went to school at Sanford. Almost a disaster for him here, but he recovers at his own six. The longtime owner of the Steelers and now the U.S. ambassador to Ireland, Dan Rooney, spending almost all of the year in Ireland, but comes back for the opener and watching his team in a 7-7 tie with the ball at the five-yard line and Collins giving the ball to Johnson. Just to correct one thing on Finnegan, he returned two punts in 07, but he is forced into service tonight. They released Mark Jones. And they love their rookie Ryan Mouton, but he is hurt. So Finnegan forced into duty tonight and able to recover his own fumble. James Harrison is an animal. I mean, it doesn't matter who tries to block that guy. He just throws him aside. Oh, my goodness. No wonder that guy was the MVP. Like That's Parker. Awesome. Like Parker, a free agent. Not only that, he was released a couple of times. And he actually was in Baltimore's camp at one point a few years ago and was released by them. Second and nine. Johnson, short side of the field, and no room to roam. And that's Kieran Fox making the tackle. You know, the more you look back and you can talk about the great plays in Super Bowl history, and for my money, I mean, you might rank them one, two, three in the last two years. I mean, the, 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 the catch. Tyree. David Tyree from Manning. And then the Harrison 100 yard interception return. And the Holmes game winning catch. I mean,. I don't know how to rank them, but those are three of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. And there was a bit of an ad lib for Harrison. He was supposed to blitz on that play. Right. And then to be in, in great enough shape to run 100 yards at the end of the half. And that is Lamar Woodley, who had to come out of the lineup at the end of the first half, who smothers Chris Johnson. And so that is a very fast three and out, and the punt from deep in their own territory. This is why they're the best defense. They are so tough at the edge. Algie Crumpler is going to do his best to block Woodley and just simply cannot. They are tearing these tight ends up on the edge, and this is not the first team they've done it to. They do it to everybody. Hendrick standing at the back of the end zone. Stephon Logan standing at the 50-yard line to run it back. Logan calls to the fair catch and makes it at the 46. That's where Ben and the gang will set up shop. Eight minutes, one second left in the third. Tied at seven. Ten Eastern and Pacific, nine Central and Mountain here on NBC. Beautiful night in Pittsburgh. Temperature in the upper 60s. Crowd electric at the outset when their Super Bowl champions came came onto the field and right now in a dog fight 7 7 from the 46 yard line on first down that pass is incomplete intended for Santonio Holmes and Roethlisberger hits the deck he got Jack but I tell you he has been giving this Titans defense headaches tonight with his pump fakes and we've seen it before remember that one in the Super Bowl pump to the guy out in the flat draw him up completely fooled and then throw it in behind him, and that was probably the biggest play on that drive as it set up the eventual game winner. Ben tonight throwing for 180, a couple of picks back to the ground. Parker takes the ball almost up to the midfield stripe with 750. Kevin Vickerson, number 96, 
making the tackle. It'll be third down and six at the 50 yard line. Well, it's one thing about the running game is that sometimes you just have to stay with it. You know, I mean, defenders get tired in the second half and they're used to flying around the first half, and then all of a sudden they get a little worn down. The first game, you always get a little more tired than any others. Sometimes just staying with that running game can have an effect. When Holmes comes limping off the field, that was Santonio on the bench. You've got Swede split wide to the left, bottom of the screen. Third down and six, Mike Wallace. The rookie is also in the game on the other side. And Roethlisberger will throw, and that's caught by the third down back. Mawilde Moore for a first down. Beautiful job up front that time. The Titans came with a rare blitz there. And watch this offensive line just absolutely perfectly pick up everything. And Kyle Vandenbosch, who typically is a guy that is going to rush your quarterback, here was forced into coverage on Moeldy Moore. And that's not a dream matchup for the Titans. No. You want to isolate on the linebacker when you get a defensive end. That's the frosting on the cake. First and 10. Good play fake, ton of time, but the secondary does its work, and then he gets chased and tackled at the 40-yard line. Boy, he takes some shots. David Thornton was there after Javon Hay chased him down with six and a half to go. Mm. Low scoring, but a lot of excitement tonight. And what did Mike Tomlin say at the beginning? He said, whichever team is more violent is going to win the game. <laughs> there has been a lot of hitting going on, and luckily for both these teams, they'll have 10 days before they have to do it again. I think they'll need every minute of it. Yeah, Pittsburgh goes to Chicago, and Tennessee will go home a week from Sunday to take on the Texans. Second and seven. And Parker can't get out of the backfield, and that's Vincent Fuller coming up to make the tackle. Fuller had an interception in the first half. It'll be third down and 10. I tell you, the, the Titans are so good at filling these gaps. Watch this time from the safety coming up in behind. They think they have the hole right there, but they do not miss one of their gaps. Everybody has a single gap, and that time Fuller found his and came in and made the play. Beautiful. Each team has run 42 plays in the game. Third down and 10 from the 43 yard line. <laughs> Rush four. Pressure. And that creates a wobbly duck, and the pass is incomplete. And it's Javon Curse and Jason Jones who both get to Roethlisberger as he released the ball. Jason Jones is doing it all over again. He had three and a half sacks the last time that he played against this football team, and he is just coming after Ben Roethlisberger. A little meeting at the quarterback along with Javon Curse. Daniel Sepulveda to punt. And the left-footed kicker sends it down to Finnegan, who calls for the fair catch, and then he gets hit. Hit by Patrick Bailey. And there's Javon Curse shaking up. Interesting call at the end of that that play because I had mentioned Finnegan had called for a fair catch. Watch this. He does, but it's too early. And he kind of waves his hand. So in other words, he's saying right off the bat, I'm, I'm calling for a preemptive fair catch. But that is not a legal fair catch signal. And thus he was eligible to be tackled and was by Patrick Bailey. And you saw him turn around and ask for a flag. And that's the reason he didn't have the flag. He's fortunately he held on to the football. Yes, he was. Tennessee at the 10 yard line. Lendale White is the running back. And here goes White over right tackle. And he gets stood up by Fox and friends. <laughs> Don't ask me. Don't ask me how I came up with that. They better give us a promo. I'm thinking of James say. Skinner. It's a promo for Roger Goodell's wife. Uh, <laughs> Second and four. Corlin Finnegan still trying to figure out what a legal fair catch is. I think you have to wave that hand one time. I don't think you can just circle it over the top. And we'll check. And officially, the ball has to be in the air, off his foot, before you can call for the fair catch. And it wasn't. Second down and four. To the outside, and this is Britton. He gets met immediately, and he gets tackled by William Gay, the cornerback, number 22. Gay, one of the new Pittsburgh starters, Brian McFadden, 
was a regular starter last year for Pittsburgh, and he left, and Gay takes over at left corner. Jeff Fisher, who knows what it's like to take over as a, an NFL coach in your 30s. Mike Tomlin, youngest coach ever to win a Super Bowl in his third year and still just 37 years old. Third down and six at the 14-yard line. Over the middle, that's Gage, and he gets free, and they can exploit that secondary now with Polamalo out of there. Ryan Clark makes the tackle, and it's a 16-yard gain. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers, when they get in those nickel blitz situations, look at them. There's not a down lineman anywhere to be found. They're trying to mess up the count of the offensive line, but as they're dropping back in coverage, there have been some holes in the middle of that zone pretty much throughout the course of the night. That's just about the same spot. Tennessee took advantage the last time they played as well. From the 30, White. He slimmed it down White. Up to the 34-yard line, gain of four. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Opening night, 7 all. Well, we talked about filling the gaps. Ryan Clark for the Pittsburgh Steelers is one of the really good hitters in here. Going to come right in here and fill in and make this hit. That's a long way back for a safety to come up and make a tackle. And boy, did he lay some leather on that one. On second down and six. Whoops. Pressure on. Arm hit. And the pass is incomplete. And that's Lamar Woodley who got in there from the corner and forced the throw. Well, you're starting to feel it, aren't you? These outside linebackers are starting to make plays now. Woodley coming against David Stewart. On the outside, Stewart is going to try and get out there, but Woodley, that rare combination of speed and strength, got to carry Collins there. Well, he is, he doesn't have a lot of wiggly kind of pass rush moves, but he can run through anybody. Third and six. Here they come again. And the pass is caught over the middle into the arms of Craig Stevens, who would be normally the number four tight end, formation. but a flag. Offense number 76 is not on the line of scrimmage. Oh, Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Oh, that's got to get Fisher crazy. That's the third time tonight, illegal formation. That's David Stewart not on the line of scrimmage. That would have been a first down for Craig Stevens, who would have been inactive except for the injury to Jared Cook. And why did he do it? Because he got beat on the prior play. Yep. You know, so he's trying to step back a little bit farther to help him get there against Lamar Woodley. He's not going to move before the snap. He just simply is off the ball, off the line of scrimmage. And it was because he couldn't get there last time. You have to have a minimum of seven on the line. And they're calling that closer than ever. Third down and 11. And that pass is dropped. Gage had it in his hands, would have had a first down, and instead Tennessee, after the penalty and the drop, will punt. Boy, I tell you what, you can't get much more open against the Steelers than this, and Kerry Collins talked about it. He said you only get so many opportunities against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and when you get one, you have to take advantage. Wasn't a great throw, and obviously a drop ball. Hendrick to punt. Logan to return it. Bounces at the 29-yard line. So Logan came up and then let it go. And that cost him about 15 yards as the ball is down at the 15-yard line. 56-yard Hendrick kick. 7 all. Green Bay football night in America. And Swanee is here. Lynn Swan, the Hall of Fame 2001 inductee, yeah. former partner of ours on Monday Night Football, Black looking on, ran for governor a few years back, Mendenhall, for a gain of four up to the 18-yard line, tackled there by Stephen Tullock. Boy, Lynn Swan made some great big-time catches in his career, but I'm not sure it matches what Santonio San did last year. Boy, that guy, could he make some circus catches in big games or yeah, what? Think about that. Well, Stallworth and Swan, and now you 
Fast forward to Ward and Holmes. When you think about Pittsburgh with running and defense, but boy, they've had some fabulous wide receivers. And this is Mendenhall. Go back to the, the Super Bowl. And of course, Ben Roethlisberger. Most of you know the story by now. He was looking out in the flat from Weldy Moore. Then he was looking for Ward. And then with three Cardinals in the picture, throws it to the back corner of the end zone. And an unbelievable toe dance by Holmes, who just a couple of plays before that had dropped what would have been a touchdown pass on the other side of the end zone. He said, all I could think was, I blew the Super Bowl. I lost the Super Bowl. And then he heard the call in the huddle, and he says, I have one more chance. <laughs> Holmes, who was on the bench, and they were checking him out, is now back in the game. And that pass is caught by Ward, but he has to go down to the turf to make the catch as uh, the clock will tick down to the end of the third quarter. Pro football right there. Chuck Cecil with a great call called the blitz. Force the hot read, make the tackle, send out the punt team. It'll be fourth down and two, and that will end the third quarter at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh with the score Tennessee 7, Pittsburgh 7. And this NBC NFL kickoff special continues after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight from Pittsburgh brought to you by Duracell. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer. Heinz Field, we start the fourth quarter with a Pittsburgh punt. Daniel Sepulveda. Fielded at the 31 by Finnegan. Out he goes at the 38-yard line. The Tennessee Titans, of course, still mourning and memorializing the passing of Steve McNair murdered on the 4th of July in Nashville and they're honoring him this year with the the number nine patch and among other things Steve a mentor to to Vince Young who had that up and down year mainly down last year and was in contention for the number two spot in training camp that's what he was vying for. And he won it outright over Patrick Ramsey. And Collins goes back to pass on first down. And winds up hitting number 18, Kenny Britt, the rookie, for a first down. Well, I tell you, when you play the Steelers, you have to be able to hit these deep out routes. It's the one spot on the field they typically leave open. You can see the inside technique by Taylor. And look at the difference in that route. Britt really rips his way out of the route, doesn't sit there and wait on the ball. And he gets the big completion. He's played really well tonight now. Fritz caught three passes for 70 yards. Double tight end set. Johnson can't swing to the outside. Tackled there by Smith. And we're going to check in with Andrea. Well, right Titans tight end Bo Smith has a sprained left knee. He was testing it and was limping. They called his return questionable, but he's sitting on the bench with a bag of ice on the knee and his coat on. As for Troy Palomalo, no further update from the Steelers, but he has not returned to the field with that knee injury. They put the franchise tag on a skate. He caught 58 balls last year, led the team. You mentioned Craig Stevens before who got into the game. He would normally be a number four on the tight end depth chart and the special teams guy, but he'll play now because Algie Crumpler and Stevens are the only tight ends. And Collins fires, and that's caught as he threads the needle to Gage. Harrison back on the coverage. First down at the Steeler 34-yard line. Boy, Kerry Collins hummed that thing in there. Just a three-man rush coming that time for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's just not working. They didn't even get close to Kerry Collins, and he showed off a little arm strength right there. You can say whatever you want about Kerry Collins. Arm strength has never been an issue. Collins, 19 of 29, 227 yards. Roethlisberger's throwing for 192. Johnson to the 32-yard line. You know, I may have talked about this earlier, but remember, Kerry Collins has never lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's 3-0 and in his career, and has been sensational. Uh, for some reason, he just seems so comfortable. And I think the biggest difference with Kerry is He's not taking sacks anymore. Prior to this year or last year, one sack every 18 dropbacks. 
Last year, one every 53. He had a success last year. A few sacks, a few turnovers. Chased out. Throws on the run. Catch made 30-yard line. Tackle made immediately on Algie Crumpler. Ryan Clark with the coverage on the play. 12-20. Remaining in the fourth quarter will be third down and six. Well, they're not being shy about blitzing now. Coming off this right side, and typically what you get with the Pittsburgh Steelers defensively, they usually either blitz one side or the other. They try and leave you with the offensive linemen blocking nobody, which you can tell as they get down in field goal range. Dick LeBeau is going to try and dial something up here to get a sack and force them out of field goal range. Crowd inspiring the defense on third down and six. And Collins throws, and that's caught, but short of the first down as he swings it outside to Crumpler. That's Ryan Mundy, number 29, who makes the tackle. Baronis, the field goal kicker. And we started the night by telling you one of the best in the league and statistically one of the best in history. But a miss from 37 and a blocked field goal. From 31 on the play that cost the Steelers, Polamalo will now attempt a 45 yard field goal to give Tennessee the lead. Hentrick to put it down at the 35 yard line. And Baronis' kick this time is good. Inside the left upright. And the Tennessee Titans take the lead by three with 11 minutes to go. Mangahila, forming the Ohio, influence of the Three Rivers, Snoop Dogg, major football fan, loves his Steelers, loves his USC Trojans, who take on Ohio State this week, They'll probably journey over to Columbus in a couple of days. I don't know that for a fact, I'm just... It's good to be Snoop Dogg. I'm suggesting, Snoop Dogg. A, suggesting an itinerary for him. 10-7 <laughs> Tennessee. And Baronis has kicked four yards into the end zone. Logan's going to come out with it. And Logan, a preseason sensation, up past the 25 and returns it to the 30. The Steelers down by three, starting the 30, fourth quarter. Opening night, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to have to come from behind. It's 10 7 Tennessee. Pittsburgh has had no running game tonight. They run the ball 18 times for 28 yards. That's Wallace in motion. Fake the end around. Swing it out to him. And the speedster rookie gets knocked down after a gain of six. Drafted Mike Wallace in the third round. Out of Mississippi. Gain of call it seven, second down and three. Well, Roethlisberger did it five times last year. Fourth quarter comebacks to win football games, of course, uh, including the Super Bowl. He's back in that position again. And they're changing the, the tempo here as they go no huddle on second down and three. To the air again, stepping up and then dumps it off. And it's Parker who makes the catch. Almost a forward pass, but he's able to swing it behind him. It's, <laughs> he avoids the sack and then somehow is able to throw throw it off to the side uh, and not forward. It looked like this. Well, maybe it was uh, forward uh, there. Uh, it uh, was uh, 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 yeah. close, but you know, the, what he does remarkably well is keep those eyes down the field and just finds people. He doesn't mind getting hit. A challengeable play, but Fisher's guys upstairs apparently saying there's not enough there. To necessarily overturn it. But he could have challenged that. First down from the 42 yard line. And it's caught by Miller. And Miller breaks a tackle. And Miller gets across the 50 and takes the ball to the 48 yard line. Keith Miller. When all else fails, what do they say around here? Go find Heath Miller. And you've got an injured Titan that's. Gage, that's Fuller who's down. Vincent Fuller. One note I was talking about Roethlisberger. He was behind the line of scrimmage. So of course, once, if you're behind the line of scrimmage, he was moving forward. And the forward pass, of course, is legal and 
no way it was going to be challenged as now Roethlisberger throws to Miller who has to reach for a first down and gets it as Cortland Finnegan makes the tackle. One of the things we've seen so many times over the years with Heath Miller is he blocks first and then when he kind of senses everything falling apart he just slips out there late and makes a play. There's some magical connection between these two guys, but Ben Roethlisberger, when he gets in trouble, knows exactly where Heath Miller is. We saw it in the Super Bowl, too. From the 47-yard line, coming across the line, and they'll, they'll get the whistle blown. And impeded to the quarterback, Vandenbosch. Close to the number 93 defense. Excuse me, unabated the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, first down. Unimpeded, unabated. Take your pick. Uh, and Ben Roethlisberger was mad at the end of this play because he had Vandenbosch moving backwards. So here he's thinking, I've got a free play. He wanted to run that thing and take a shot down the field. First and five, and Waldy Moore in the backfield. Lefty, 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 lefty. Caught by Holmes for a first down. Good coverage that time by Nick Harper, the longtime former Colt, now in his third year with Tennessee. But good for 10 yards and a first down at the 31 yard line. Anytime the Steelers get in that three by one formation, three receivers to one side, Holmes to the other side, if they're going to single up Holmes, they should automatically come back there. They didn't take advantage of that enough the last time these two teams got together. There they saw it. He made the audible, he made the play again, three by one, three receivers left. Santonio San Holmes to the right. Parker on Holmes again. To the ground, to Moore. And he'll pick up about three. The safety, Chris Holt, making the tackle. Ball will be spotted at the 27 yard line, second down and six. And one of the reasons that you have trouble running the footballs and getting sacks is when you can't run the ball, then you're defensively able to come after the quarterback. And the Steelers right now just are not impressing the Titans with the way they're running it. So they're coming after Roethlisberger nearly every snap. No huddle, four wide. Oh, oh and Ben gets decked. Javon Curse. Coming off the left side with a clear shot and a hard shot on Roethlisberger. And that's just on Ben. You've got to realize here they've got everybody up. You've got an unblocked man. Anytime they get in that empty formation, Jeff Fisher said, we don't have a dime defense. If they go empty on us, we are blitzing them. We're sending everybody. That time he almost got his head taken off. Third down and 12. That's four sacks of Roethlisberger tonight. That one for six yards. Third and a dozen. This time rushing only three. Roethlisberger directing traffic and finds the open man, and that's Santonio Holmes. Rushing three, dropping eight. Holmes gets three on the left hash. Big first down. We had so much luck bringing pressure against them. Here they come with only three. Been very patient. Couple of pump fakes. Redirects Antonio Holmes with his hand. He knew that defender was there, and he just simply waited for Holmes to come around him. Great, great quarterback play. Seven catches, 108 yards now. For Antonio Holmes. Ticking down to five minutes. Ben looking at the play clock. Moore. To the 10 yard line. And Roethlisberger saying, all right, let's huddle up now. Well, Gain of eight, second that, and two. It's interesting because now the Pittsburgh Steelers are going back in the huddle, which is okay because you want to play the clock here a little bit, but look what the Titans are doing. And that allows them to substitute now. So you get some fresh bodies in the game. That defense was completely worn out. The substitution now is going to allow them to get back in it. Black 
Moore. And Moore will chug his way inside the tent. So no Parker on this drive. Parker tonight, 13 carries, 19 yards. If they're going to win the game, they're going to do it through the air. The Steelers tonight have rushed for 1.7 yards per carry, third and one. And they even had a fullback in the game that time, Frank Summers, which everybody in Pittsburgh wants him to do more of. And there he is again. Here they are again in a situation in which they failed so often last year and earlier in the game tonight. Third and one. And once again, they can't convert on third and short. William Hayes, number 95, is there. So now the Steelers faced with a fourth and one, a field goal, a chip shot, would tie the game, and at least they line up, they line up at least to go for it. Will they snap it is the question. I'd be stunned. No, no. I would too. I think the decision now is whether to take the penalty or not or call the timeout. They're probably just going to take the five yards. Might as well. It's a trip shot. Field goal. It's a difference between a 26 yarder or a 31 yarder. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. On a night with not much wind. So they'll take the delay of game penalty. The clock goes down to 302. And they will send Reed in to try to tie the game. Saw a lot of motion on this third down play, bringing Heath Miller over. Basically, he switched spots with Santonio Holmes. But again, the penetration getting there. And we saw Frank Summers, the fullback, basically whiff on that play, not get the block. And again, I'll tell you, the Steelers, it's been a nightmare for them, this short yardage. They cannot find an answer. Reed, a 32-yard attempt. Sepulveda puts it down. Whoa. Oh, boy. The kick was low but good. Just got it over the outstretched hands of the defense. And we're tied at 10 with 2.57 to play on opening night in Pittsburgh. Titan defense gassed, but they did come up with that big stop on third and one, limiting Pittsburgh to a field goal, Chris. But remember when they came out of that no huddle offense, which was so effective. It allowed Tennessee to substitute, and then they made their stand defensively with fresh bodies. Reed with the kickoff. 10-yard line, Javon Ringer. Up to the 29-yard line and a flag throw. And that could be a big flag. Instead of on the 28 or 9. During the return. Holding. Number 51. Receiving team. Mm. And yard penalty. First down. Time out. Gerald McGrath. Working at a Southern Mississippi. 250 to play. 10-10. Only Brett Favre and Peyton Manning have led more game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime than has Kerry Collins. The backers, Harrison and Woodley, who so often come into prominence in situations like this. And after the penalty, Tennessee starts at the 18-yard line. Collins to throw on first down. And the pass is caught. Gage makes the catch. That's a gain of 11. That's a first down up at the 29-yard line. He's tackled there by William Gay. Tennessee with all of its timeouts plus the two-minute warning. A couple of things at work here. Obviously, you want to work a little time off the clock in case you have to punt it. Right now, Kerry Collins back in the huddle and just letting that clock work down a little bit. They'd like to get it inside two minutes and then really go to work. From the 29, out of the shotgun. Johnson stays in the block. Collins under pressure and then just has to throw it away because James Farrier came in and put the heat on. Clock stopped 208 to play. Boy, and they had him open out there in the flat. Nate Washington was really wide open and Kerry just uncomfortable threw that one away, but they may want to come right back to it because Nate Washington 
is this wide open. Steelers show blitz. Here they come. Collins pressured again. Forced to throw it away again. And that time it's Casey Hampton who busts through the nose tackle. Third and ten. Well, they did exactly that. They tried to come right back with it. Bring the all-out blitz up the middle. Hampton's just going to loop to the outside and nobody picks him up. That's what happens when you play Pittsburgh. And now because of the incomplete passes, they don't pick it up here. They've got to punt it back at the two minute warning. Thought they would have milked this clock a little more. Third and ten. Pittsburgh's pressure not letting them. Collins this time has time. Slings it over the middle too high. Intended for Justin Gage. And Gage takes the pop. It's fourth down with a minute and 57. And Pittsburgh has all of its timeouts. When it gets the ball back 157 to play on opening night is this one on opening night 2009 we'll go down to the wire Tennessee 10 Pittsburgh 10. The Wendy's post game report well, that might be about an hour from now if we have a little overtime could be. Here's Hendricks fifth punt of the night. He's averaging 49 yards per boot. And that one is a high short kick. His worst of the night at the most inopportune time. And it will go out of bounds. As they'll mark it. Off the side of his foot went the kick. It's only a 28 yard boot. You're a golfer. Golfer Al. What's this called? You know what it's called. The yes word. You play golf too. Yeah, and I hit a bunch of those. Uh, here we go. Ben Roethlisberger right back in a familiar spot. Great field position. Titans didn't use the clock. And boy, they have left Ben Roethlisberger in a position that he loves. Noeldy Moore is the back. So Parker is on the bench. First and ten from the 42-yard line. Then, after checking off to the right, goes back the other way to Santonio Holmes. That time the protection was great. Roethlisberger looking over the middle, looking to his right, goes back to Holmes. First down. Flawless. Flawless. Perfect protection. Look at that. Ben has time to go all over the field. You have no chance as a defense. These defensive linemen are wearing out. They're going to have to come back to the blitz. You cannot let Big Ben stand back there and do that. Matt Starks providing the security on the left side perfectly from the 46. First down. Caught by Ward. And he gets wrestled down inbounds. Finnegan making the tackle. That time the Titans come with a corner blitz and Ben Roethlisberger read it perfectly. Got it right to the guy who they were trying to blitz with. Ben Roethlisberger's got it going right now. Ten straight completions. They can do a little milking of the clock on the way down the field as well here. Second down and seven. And that's what they're doing. Roethlisberger under pressure avoids the sack throws caught over the middle that's Noel De Moore and he has a first down at the 34 and they will take a timeout here with 63 seconds remaining and that's what makes him so great I mean among all of the things that he does the great arm the pump faking and all that he just extends plays I don't want to say like Noah the quarterback, but he's right at the top of the list right now. Well, Kyle Vandenbosch, who plays for Tennessee, the defensive end, called him the most courageous quarterback in the NFL. And you see why. And he basically has apologized to his offensive lineman. He said, guys, I understand. I I'm the reason people write such bad things about you because you give up all these sacks. But it's me. It's the way I play. And Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator, says, I'm not going to take that away from him. I had a kid in college that I tried to change. I tried to make him get the ball out quick, not scramble around, and I ruined him. I'm not going to ruin Ben Roethlisberger. I'm going to let him play his game. Slow start for Ben. 
And now all of a sudden, as hot as it gets, 11 straight completions, trying to lead them on a game-winning drive. Two timeouts remaining for them. The ball to the 34 and first down. They rush for it. Line doing the job again. Roethlisberger with time. Inside the 20, Ward makes the catch. And Ward will fumble the ball inside the five-yard line. Hines Ward fumbles, and Tennessee recovers at the four. It was Vincent Fuller, who earlier had an interception, who creates the huge fumble here. And Hines Ward, had he dropped down inside the four-yard line, probably could have taken the the clock all the way down to the end. See, Michael Griffin comes in with the strip just right on the football. And Heinz Ward obviously wanting to score a touchdown here and never saw Griffin. Never saw him. All he has to do is fall down on the ground, take a knee, and it's going to be game over. One of the great players in Steelers history with a huge mistake here. Griffin and Fuller are right there together. Ward getting inside the 10, exasperated as he comes to the bench. And Tennessee right now with 51 seconds. It was Stephen Tullock who winds up recovering the fumble. And boy, now if you're the Tennessee Titans, you just want to get out of here. Jacob Ford is hurt on the play. Take a look at the, the play again from its inception. Great protection. Roethlisberger has time. Finds Ward wide open. You know, this four-man pass rush just is not working. They just can't do it. You know, when you have a zone defense, it gets stretched. The longer that you hold the ball as a quarterback, instead of now having to cover 40 yards of field, you're covering 60 yards of field, and those holes are gaping in there. But, boy, you're talking about a play that we may look back on at the end of the season between these two great football teams. Could be monumental. But now they have to get this clock run out. Griffin went to the Pro Bowl last year. First and ten now the ball is at the four-yard line. And this is Johnson as Tennessee will be content to send it to overtime if they can. If Pittsburgh wants to use their timeouts, they have two. And they will spend the first of those right here. I think they're going to get the clock to run out here. I think they can do that. But remember, just in case, if the Titans had to punt it, remember that weird rule that they can fair catch the kick and then get a free kick right. for a game-winning field goal. But I think the way this clock sets up right now that right. they should be able to run it out. There's only one timeout remaining, and that will take you to a third down situation and then you can let the clock run out one of the toughest most physical players certainly to ever play the wide receiver position and makes a big play and just pure competitiveness makes him try and score if he just takes a knee it's basically game over right. but he just doesn't have that in him second and eight And you've got a full start here. Full start, number 76 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. David Stewart, right tackle. And for Jeff Fisher, I've got to think that he will take overtime in a heartbeat. You come in here against the world champions, tough environment. If he can get this thing to overtime and give himself a chance. One thing Tennessee wants to do here, they want to take four seconds off off the clock on this play. And Collins will take it up to the four, and they take three seconds off. Now you make a great well, point. That's a bad call. Well, except right now, what they have to do is just run a play, and by the time they have to run the next play, the clock could run out. But it's, it was very, very close. And you're right, because if they're forced to punt and you fair catch the punt, you then get, even with no time left, a free kick, in effect, a field goal with nobody rushing to win the game. Yeah, but essentially, assuming that this next play will at least take two seconds, 
they should be okay here. So, but it, <laughs> I'm sure Jeff Fisher is counting on his fingers and toes over there to make sure that he can get this clock run out. It's been some game, hasn't it, it's Ben? Been, what a been great opener. Very low scoring, but a lot of excitement, a lot of very interesting stuff, a lot of great strategy, a lot of hard hitting. And Collins now will take the ball up to the four yard line. So just barely will this clock expire, and that will take us to overtime. As it should be between these two teams. Boy, it's been a strange back and forth moment. And for Heinz Ward, he knows that he had the game winner in his hands and let it slip through his fingers. And he can't believe it. And now, like Santonio Holmes, all he can hope for is one more chance. And that will be the end of regulation right there. With a score tied at 10. Oh, here we go with the old uh, coin toss and both teams may not get an opportunity. I don't know about you, but I like the NFL sudden death rules. I like the fact that on any play, once you get to overtime, it could end on that play. I know there are people who have opposing views on that. I like the system. Yeah, I'm fine with it, too. I understand both sides of the argument here, but I think it works pretty well. The argument, of course, being that if you lose the coin toss, you may not see the ball, but so be it. So it's up to your defense to do the job. Yeah, and with these two defenses, it may be a, an advantage. We're going to play up to a 15-minute overtime period. The first team that scores will win the game. If neither team scores, the game will be recorded as a top. Fourth quarter timing rules are in effect. Each team has two timeouts. All replays will be initiated by the replay booth. You're the visitors. You'll make the call. Five says tails. It's heads. Pittsburgh, you like the ball. Good goal. You want to kick in that direction. Pittsburgh will receive. Good luck, gentlemen. So the strip and the fumble recovery sends us to overtime in the first game of the 2009 season. Steelers to get the ball. For time for his team to score wins. You play up to 15 minutes, otherwise the game winds up as a tie. There are no coaches challenges. It's like the last two minutes, all reviews come from the booth. The last time there was a tie was last year in that Philadelphia Cincinnati game. Where Don McNabb didn't know a game could end in a tie. And that tie wound up helping Philadelphia get into the playoffs because they wound up 9 6 and 1 and beat out Dallas by a half game. Logan, two yards in the end zone. And he brings the ball out to the 22 yard line. And let's go back to. The biggest play of the game is Heinz Ward comes out onto the field. Well, obviously, regardless, the play is to get down here. If you can think of that in this crazy situation at the end of the game, because even if you score a touchdown here, you're still going to leave the Titans with time to come back the other way. So if it had crossed his mind, which sometimes it's something you talk about in the huddle before a play, you get down, you kick the game winner. 53 is Mike. Roethlisberger, red hot. In the second half, Moeldi Moore is the back. They've had no running game tonight. Ben is thrown the 303 yards from the 22-yard line. The pressure is on. The pass is underthrown. The heat was put on the quarterback. And the pass at Moore's feet, Javon Hay, number 75, with the pressure. It'll be second down and 10. Boy, we haven't seen much pressure out of the four-man rush for a long time, but Take Javon Hay hit. finally making a move back inside and forced Roethlisberger to hurry that one just a bit. Second and ten. Again, no blitz. Four rush. Seven back. Open right. Left side is Ward and Hines Ward. Picks up a first down. 
Oh, you just can't do this. You, you've got to you're going to stretch this zone in a thousand different directions as that quarterback stands there, and you just can't keep allowing him to do that. I would rather take a chance on getting an interception or making a play, and right now they're just standing there in that four-man rush and not even getting close. Ward seven catches. Holmes has eight. Miller has seven tonight. The line does its job. Again, a lot of time. He hits Miller. Miller to the 40-yard line. That's a gain of seven yards. And Heath Miller has now caught eight passes tonight for 63 yards. It'll be second and two. Well, I guess maybe they're thinking that we're a four-man pass rush team. We're not going to change our strategy. This is what we do, but it's not working right now. They need a play. They need some play, a blitz, an interception, something. On second and two. Now they blitz, but it's a run. And Moore, does he get the first down is the question. He's very close. Mowelde Moore on a second and two. Well, they came with the blitz that time, but they blitzed the wrong way. They blitzed to the wide side of the field, and they caught him with a run back to the other way. So I don't know if Ben saw that one an audible, or they just got lucky on it. Levy will bring the, ch the uh, chain gang across the field. You saw the yellow line. And that would indicate that he has enough for the first down. The Steelers tonight, 35 yards rushing on 22 carries. And that's a first down. So back to back first downs on the first drive in overtime. The one thing you do not want to see is an angry Heinz Ward coming right here. Check him out on this play. Oh, <laughs> man. He is devastating. I saw him knock Ed Reed out once on a block where Ed Reed was looking him right in the eyes, and they're standing there, and he just lunged into him and knocked him out cold. That's a big time KO. That time he took care of Vincent Ford. First down, 43 yard line. Moore again. He can't get on track. Stop just after he crosses the line of scrimmage. Jacob Ford, number 78, first to hit him. Well, I, I'm all for mixing it up occasionally, but if you had to ask me what's working better, the passing game or the running game, I want that ball in Ben's hands right now because that pass rush has not been getting close. Now second and nine, you open up a lot of possibilities defensively. Ben 30 out of 39. Black, black. Second and nine. Pass, quick, caught, right side, Hines Ward. Hit by Keith Bullock, and that's going to set up a third and short. Third and short, which has been the bane of the Steelers' existence last season and ball this when they try to run the ball. I'll tell you, great. Veteran players out there making They're plays. Roethlisberger and Heinz Ward both saw the blitz hit the hot read. They're down and two. Now here we go <laughs> again. Silver. 55. Third and about a yard and a half. From the shotgun. Here come the Titans. There goes the pass. Antonio Holmes makes the catch. Big first down. Well, there we go. We talked about it earlier. They go three by one again. Three receivers to the top of the screen. San Antonio Holmes to the bottom. If you're going to play them one on one, they're simply going to throw the football. Just man coverage on the outside. Got exactly what they wanted. But what kind of a statement was that? Shotgun on third and one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers going no huddle to keep Tennessee from substituting. They don't want them rotating. Got it again. Holmes at the bottom of the screen. Ward out of the slot. Roethlisberger in trouble. Down by the shirt. He gets it away and the pass is incomplete. He's like Iron Man. You can't bring him down. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they're thinking too. Kyle Vandenbosch looked absolutely exhausted. They thought they had him. I mean, he can throw and contort his body in such strange positions and still get the thing. I mean, he's, that's a sack. I, you know. 
almost every quarterback in the league, when you get two hands on him, that's a sack, and Ben gets away again. Second and ten. Not in field goal range. From the 37, not in the stadium. Over the middle. Caught 15 yard line. That's Mike Wallace. The rookie from Mississippi. Looked downfield. Looked to his checkoff guy. Went back to Wallace. And now they're in field goal position. Oh, I tell you what. Big Ben throws this thing. Kind of flat footed. And let's give the rookie a lot of credit. Mike Wallace down the field. He saw his quarterback in trouble. He found the open zone. Took off down the field. And Roethlisberger found him. Doesn't look like they're going to fool around at all now. No. Nope. It'll be about a 33 yard field goal for Jeff Reed. And a timeout is taken here. And nobody is wishing this one through more than Heinz Ward. So Pittsburgh takes the timeout. A 33 yard field goal attempt to win the game for Reed. Welcome to the NFL, though, Mike Wallace. That was a big time play. Big time play there for a young guy coming in. His first action and then give him another little pointer. But anytime your quarterback has his arm around you and you have his arm around him, that's a good sign. Not for Chris Johnson, though. Nope. Tell you what, the last one he hit was a low liner. Yes, it was. Sepulveda will put the ball down. Greg Warren will snap it. 33 yard attempt to win the game. He's got it. The Pittsburgh Steelers very much like last year defense and Roethlisberger another fourth quarter comeback for Ben Roethlisberger and for Jeff Reed this one was dead solid no doubt wouldn't be surprised to see these two teams again somewhere down the road Two first class football teams, and they are both good. Neither would I. Opening night, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Super Bowl champions, win their seventh straight opener in overtime, 13 10. Welcome to the Wendy's Post Game Report. Here now, Al Michaels. In overtime on opening night, the Pittsburgh Steelers win it 13 to 10. The Tennessee Titans losing the coin flip, never seeing the ball. Ben Roethlisberger guiding them down the field, and Jeff Reed with a game winning field goal. Andrea Kramer down on the field right now with Ben Roethlisberger and Heinz Ward. Andrea. Tell me what the emotions are like on a night like this to end the game like this. You know what? It means a lot. We had a lot of fight. We came out. We didn't play well early, but uh, really proud of the way the guys fought and came back. How did you rebound from the fumble, Hines? You know what? I'm one of the big guys, and I know better than that. I need to get down and, and try to end the game right there, but uh, we're a resilient bunch. You know, a bunch of guys and all the guys came back and said, you know, don't worry about it. Make it up in overtime. And, uh, you know, fortunate for us, uh, Ben threw us some good balls and made some plays, and uh, Jay Reed bailed us out. You had obviously key reception, the key block on the overtime drive. What was going through your mind? Uh, just to go out and redeem myself. You know, I always taught myself to try to go out and be a playmaker for the team. And today a bunch of guys made huge plays. Ben stepped up and had confidence in everybody, and we went out and we won the game. Obviously on a night when the running game wasn't there for you and you were off to a slow start, you end up with 12 straight completions at one point. How are you able to turn it around? You know what? We went to the no huddle package, and you got to give guys a lot of credit. We put a lot of extra work in this week with that. Uh, moved the ball down the field, a lot of passing plays. Guys stepped up when they had to. 
I didn't think we were going to have to do a fourth quarter comeback so early in the year, but we'll take it. Your 18th fourth quarter comeback in, in the regular season, amazing. I mean, what enables you to do this, Ben? You know what? It's a, it's a whole group of guys. We find a way to get it done. The line did an unbelievable job those last third and fourth quarter giving me time because there's a lot of times plays just break down and receivers get open. Found Hines a couple of times waving his hands above his head, so get him the ball, let them make plays. So what's the statement made tonight by the defending Super Bowl champions? Absolutely nothing. we got to come back and get ready for next week. What happened last year is last year. Uh, we want to know and get ready for Chicago next week. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thank you, Andrea. Next week to go to Chicago, Soldier Field. Meantime, Roethlisberger, 363 yards passing tonight in a seal of win. Welcome back to the Wendy's Post Game Report. In overtime, the Pittsburgh Steelers, a little before midnight, knocking off the Tennessee Titans to score a 13 to 10. Mention once again, if you joined this late, Troy Polamalu, knee injury in the first half, didn't come back, but the defense stepped up when they had to. And then a rookie of all things, Mike Wallace, makes a very big play in overtime, Chris. Yeah, it really was happening pretty much throughout the second half of this ball game. Mike Wallace is going to go down the field right next to Heinz Ward there, and you'll see him come back see that Ben's in trouble and then scramble for an open part of the field and that ended up being the game winner nice play for a rookie Mike Wallace tick 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 yeah there you go <laughs> I knew you couldn't that. resist <laughs> you know what's coming so the Pittsburgh Steelers win it as they head to Chicago now Ben Roethlisberger does it again Roethlisberger 33 out of 43, but the, the Pittsburgh Steelers have to think about a ground game right now that has been non-existent. Yeah, they do, and they looked an awful lot like they did a season ago. Trouble in the short yardage situation, trouble running the football, but tonight the, the Tennessee Titans just got exhausted in the second half, and that no huddle forced those defensive linemen to stay on the field, and they just wore down and could not get any pressure whatsoever. I'm not sure Ben Roethlisberger the rest of his career is going to have more time to throw the football than what he did tonight. And let's give some credit to that offensive line. Much maligned offensive line. Not a great job with the run blocking, but the pass blocking was nearly perfect. For Tennessee, a 10-day ten, ten break right now. That's the, the, the good thing about playing the opener, and they'll take on the the Houston Texans who have to face the Jets this Sunday. Well, and Jeff Fisher said that this team, uh, this would be good for his football team regardless of what happened. Coming in here on the road, playing the world champions, he thought they would step up from here. Off to Green Bay, buddy. Can't wait. All right. Three nights from tonight. Sunday night football. 13 to 10 is our final score. Sunday night, Bob Costas hosting football night in America from Lambeau Field. Bears, Packers, and coming up next, except on the West Coast, your local news followed by the Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. Now this is Al Michaels for Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer, and our entire NBC Sports crew saying good night from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. NBC Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.